Hey, beautiful friends. Welcome back to another episode of the Robin Graham Show. I have a special guest with me today, and we are going to talk about how you can scale in eight to 10 hours a week. Gosh, does it even seem possible? I know so many of you feel like you're hustling, you're on the brink of feeling burnout or, you know, just feeling like you're spinning in circles. And the Holly Haynes, who I'm having on to have this conversation today, is a business coach like myself. And we both have a philosophy that you don't have to be on social media to grow your business. And if that is dragging you down, if that creating content for social media is causing you to feel like all you're doing is spending time creating content, then I think this conversation is going to inspire you to maybe take a look at your business and reevaluate. Holly built her business while working full time, and that is how she created her model of how to scale in eight to 10 hours a week. So we are going to dive into this today, and I think it's going to be a fabulous conversation. So I hope you stay to the end and take all the juiciness with you for the rest of the week and to implement in your business. So without further ado, Holly Haynes, welcome to the Robin Graham show. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. I'm excited to have you. I am, you know, it's funny because we've been connected on social media for a really long time. I know. And, you know, I've watched you go from being in corporate, building your, I guess we could say in air quotes, side hustle, and then going from corporate side hustle to solely being in your business. Mm -hmm. And you have um, multi, I guess a multifaceted business and you have, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you have a planner as well, right? Yeah. 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 A physical product also. Yeah. (laughs) A physical product also. So you've really done remarkable things and it's been fun to watch you grow as you raised your two girls, your twins and all of that good stuff. So Would you please tell the listeners a little bit about your journey and how you got to where you are today? Yeah. um, I love this question. It's like, tell your life story in two minutes. Um, Mm -hmm. So I'm Holly Haynes. I'm in Columbus, Ohio. Um, I have twins who are nine now. They were in kindergarten when I started this whole journey. I also have a stepdaughter who's 25 almost. Um, So I always say like, if you want to learn to be really efficient, like try having newborn twins and a teenager at the same time, because that will teach you a lot. Um, but long story short, I have a 22 year corporate strategy background. So I, you know, went to college, went to grad school, followed the path, got, um, you know, a big job in, uh, corporate consulting. So I would travel around the United States working for fortune 500 companies. And I like to say, I just help them unravel really complicated things. So they would bring me and my team in, and they would ask us to like, you know, we need this multi-million dollar project to happen, create the plan that's going to help us execute it. So that's really what my secret sauce is. And I like to say, I like to keep strategy simple because they weren't hiring me for this like complex system. They were hiring me to come in and say, like, I see the vision for you. These are the steps that you need to take. And this is, you know, how you need to be, hold yourself accountable. So I had this moment, I was in grad school And I don't know if you've heard of, um, Jenny's ice cream. Yeah. She has really amazing ice cream. She's from Columbus. She's a amazing entrepreneur and she had just started her business and she came to speak to us and she wasn't talking about ice cream or building her business. She was talking about the impact that she wanted to make with her company in the community and to women in business. And I just remember sitting there and I was like, well, this is what I want to do. Like, and I just remember thinking like, I just want to quit school right now, quit my job. And I want to go do this. Like whatever she's doing, sign me up for, which of course you can't do, but it sort of just put like a little bug in my ear of like, I think there's more that I could be doing than just sort of following along to, you know, whatever my boss was telling me to do. So that was a probably 12 years ago. And I, I started very slow. So I started, well, I'm going to start a women's leadership group in my job, or I'm going to start mentoring, you know, younger women who are just starting out in their career. And so it was sort of like a stepping stone. And then in January of 2020, I was like, Oh, you know what? I'm ready. Like my kids are still young, but old enough that we've gotten through this phase. And I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to go out on my own and I'm going to see what this looks like. So I hired a business coach with no business. I had nothing like negative income at this point. 
And we decided that we were going to start a podcast because I love podcasting. And I was like, well, I'll just, you know, start talking about what I know. We'll see what people say. We'll build the community first, and then we'll figure out what the next steps are. The podcast, uh, Crush the Rush, came out the very first day that the first case of COVID hit the United States. So I'm on this like journey now where I'm, you know, negative $10,000 into a program. I launched this podcast and the world is like literally shutting down and I'm talking about time blocking. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, what do I do? Like you keep going. What do you do? So I kept going. I pivoted my message a little bit and started sharing how I was building this business while in the pandemic, while homeschooling kindergartners now. And um, it stuck. People really liked the behind the scenes of like what I was doing and how I was sharing it. Uh, so we ended up building our community first and then sort of launched all of our programs uh, after that. That's awesome. So you weren't working full time when you started or you were working full time. Oh no, yeah, I was working. So you I were left still. My, yeah. Yeah. I left my corporate job a year ago. Um, so I'd say okay. 95% of my business was built while I was working full time. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> I love this so much. And, you know, honestly, I think, cause I started my podcast in 2020 as well. Yeah. In Jan in January, I think January 6th was our first launch. Yeah. Uh, the first episode launched. And it's, I honestly think it was kind of a blessing because what it was. were people doing? They had right. all this extra time to listen to podcasts. So it was a great way to build community and to really demonstrate your expertise and grow your authority. So super cool. All right. So let's talk about this then. Your, one of your big messages is how to scale in eight to 10 hours a week. Yeah. So you built this business in eight to 10 hours a week. How did yeah. you do it? Yeah. So first I will say it wasn't a matter of how it was a matter. I didn't have any other choice. So one of my favorite books is, um, gosh, the title just slipped my mind, but there's, it's something about there's, there's no plan B like, so for me, there was no plan B. It was like, I had eight to 10 hours a week. I had to do the best that I could with it. And that was it. So I was like very focused on, okay, if I only have eight hours, this is what it's going to look like. The first thing that I like to share is if you spend eight hours a week on anything, it's 416 hours a year. Like that is a lot of time. And so I think, you know, going into it, we're like, that's impossible. Right. So I would just say like, well, actually it's not. And it's 400. It's a lot of time. Like think what you could do with 400 hours. So I sat down cause I'm like a Enneagram three planner. I like all the checklists kind of thing. And I was like, okay, if I have eight hours a week, I have to make it work. And for me, it was making it work at like six in the morning. So I set very specific business hours of every day, Monday through Friday, six to seven 30. That's when I'm working on my business for me at the beginning, it was very much like creating content, writing podcasts, like getting yourself out there. But I had not, I did not miss a business hour session for almost two years. I did take a couple of days off. Like once I finally <laughs> quit my corporate job. But every single morning, six to seven thirty, that's what I was doing. It doesn't have to be first thing in the morning. It can be whatever time you want. But for me, it was like, what are what is the time mapped out on the calendar that I'm gonna work on my business? And it's a non-negotiable, which I know we hear a lot, but I think the consistency of doing that is really what changed the game. The second thing is, is I'm a big believer that you can do a lot in a short amount of time. So 30 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour. But sometimes you need a longer uh, strategy session. So my strategy sessions were Saturday mornings. I still do it to this day because my kids sleep in. So now they do anyway. So they sleep till about eight o'clock. So I could have a good two hours from six to eight where I could sit down and I could, you know, map out a course or I could do like big things that I couldn't do in 10 to 15 minute increments during the week because all these other things were going on. So I think it's really important that you do have set business hours, but you've also got this strategic time where you're slowing down and you're looking at the bigger picture. I always say like, you know, one of our favorite things to do as a family is travel. It's, you know, if your vision is to fly cross country, you could end up in Alaska or you could end up in Hawaii. Like you, and it's just like a little pivot depending on which way you go. So you've got to have that time I think it's at least two hours a week where you're really looking at, okay, am I going the right direction? What's working? What's not working? 
Do I need to change anything? You know, should I set different business hours? What does that look like? So that was two hours. So if you're adding it up, it's five hours, Monday through Friday, two hours on Saturday, and then one hour on Sunday. And my hour on Sunday was to plan. And so it's not working on your business or in your business. It's looking at the week ahead and really thinking about, okay, when, when are my business hours? What am I working on? What's going on with our family? Where do I need help? And really spending that hour making sure that you've got a plan set up for the next week ahead. And so I just repeated that over and over and over again. But the other thing that I found is, you know, I would get up at five or five 30 and I'd be like, Oh, it's business hour time. And then I would be like half awake and be like, I don't know what, what do I focus on? Like, I don't want to spend my time trying to figure out what to focus on when I have, you know, such little time. So I created what I call theme days. I still use them to this day. And it's just like a really easy way to batch. So like, as an example, every Monday would be content day. So I knew at 6 a.m. on Monday morning without even looking at anything, like I was, I was up and I was writing content. I knew Wednesdays to this day are podcast days. So that's when I'm writing podcasts. That's when I'm, you know, doing whatever I need to do for podcasts. Eventually I had client days. Uh, and I would say at the beginning, I was taking client calls at like 7 30 in the morning because it was before my work hours would, you know, kick in, which if you're listening and you're like, well, that's crazy. It is a little crazy, but people love that time because their kids were still asleep or was before they're going to work. So you can make it work. So I would have like a client call day, but the whole theory is, is that I wasn't thinking about or wasting my time trying to figure out what I needed to do because they had these theme days set up to help me do it. Um, and the cool thing is you can make theme days, whatever you want. So if you're working on a website, as an example, and your website day is Thursday and it's Monday and you're like, Oh, I just thought of like seven things that I need to do on my website. You just write it down and you know that you're going to get to it on Thursday. And it sort of like takes the stress off of, I have a 1700 line to do list, but no time to do it because you've set aside time to do it. So my formula was really set business hours, a strategy session, at least once a week, a planning session, and then theme days. Um, and I have not stopped doing that. We're in year three now. So it's, you know, I always say consistency trumps talent because most people will not be consistent with that schedule. And if you are consistent, you're going to create the momentum you need to really see that next step for your business. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. So, okay. I love your discipline. Like that to yeah. me, that's amazing. Amazing. Um, I'm pretty disciplined myself and yet sometimes I get off track and it's because of, um, those disruptions, right? Mm -hmm. Like where you, you think you have everything under control and sometimes with kids that just happens, but you know, the other time frame too, is if people are sitting here, like you said, thinking seven 30, that's crazy. There's also lunch hour. Oh, and yeah. if you are working, you you're given in the corporate world, right? Typically a lunch hour. So you yeah. can use that lunch hour as I know I've had coaching clients where they had a hard time. They're like, where am I going to fit this in? Well, mm -hmm. what about your lunch break? And it yeah. works out well because you can actually eat while you're working. But if you plan, I, what I like so much about what you said is that you plan how you're going to spend those days. So if you have that one hour block of time, you know, this is the task that you're going to be able to accomplish or tasks, plural, that you're going to be able to accomplish in that time frame. I love it. Yeah. I like that too. I would say my job was so crazy. I actually did not have a lunch hour. <laughs> like it, like once I started, it was just like, I'll see you, oh. you know, eight o'clock. So you, I think the, the message is, is you've got to pick the time where you can be consistent. For me, it was morning because everyone was asleep and I didn't feel like I had to be in my corporate job. I also say that I like turn into a zombie at like five o'clock. Like I'm just, I don't work well at night. So yeah. I think part of it is figuring out like, when do you work the best? What works best for your schedule and really figuring out the time where you can show up and be consistent for one hour. Like when I would ask myself, do I really want to do this right now? Sometimes the answer was no, but I'm like, Holly, it's one hour. Like you could do it, like set a timer, let's go. Yeah, yeah. And that discipline to set a timer too. So that if you do, you know, you've you've got that blocked. There's no question yeah. as to how long it's going to be or what you're going to accomplish. So great. Okay, so 
now your husband is working in your business mm -hmm. with you. So let's talk about that a little bit, like that balancing family life and now maintaining your relationship with your husband while you're building this business and, and, you know, how are you doing that? Yeah. <laughs> well, I will say at the beginning and he tells this story really well, I didn't share anything. Like I am like a worker bee. Like the way that I deal with stress is I will just keep working. I mean, it's, it's a good trait, but it's also a bad trait. And so when I do get stressed out, I won't share anything. I like shut down. I'm like a, a clam. So at the beginning, I didn't share anything. Like I didn't share what was happening with the business. I didn't share. I was just like, oh, I'll just figure it out in my business hours. Right. But what I learned was I could actually get more help and even get more time to work on my business if I shared what I was doing and I shared the vision of what I had. So like as a family, we love traveling. And I was like, you know what? I would love it if one, I could leave my corporate job because of multiple reasons, but two, like, wouldn't it be awesome if like once a quarter, like we could take our girls and travel abroad. So we came up with this like vision together once I like finally opened up and he was like, Oh, this is like, this is something like, I think this is something. And then the second thing that I did is I actually took him on a business retreat with me. Um, because here's what I find, like we're in this world, right? So we're talking about all the things, like all the words, funnels and Kajabi and, you know, email sequences. And like, he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like we forget that we're in this like little pocket. So I took him to the, to a business retreat with me. And I was like, I just want you to listen to what everyone's talking about. And it was such a game changer because he saw other families and entrepreneurs that were doing the same thing. And he was following the conversations of, oh, well, like you're not the only, you know, crazy person who thinks this is possible. Like this is actually working for people. Um, and so then I just very slowly started like bringing him in of like, hey, I listened to this webinar today. I think it's like really cool. Do you want to listen to it? And so it started just opening up of like what I was learning and like teaching him as I was going. And then, you know, as we grew, like having your husband help you is free labor. So I was like, Hey, what are you really interested in? Which is a key topic. Cause you don't want to like give somebody something that they don't want to do. Um, but he's really good at numbers and really good at analytics. And he also does real estate. So he's great at having conversations with people. So he started doing more of like our backend finances, uh, like monitoring our data and email and analytics and stuff like that. And then we have a planner. And so he does all the customer support for the planner. Like, Hey, my address changed. The shipping is different. I need help with this, or I want to change the cover. Like all the things that I could teach him to have conversations that would take that off of my plate. So it started out as nothing and then very slowly moved into, you know, where we are today. Yeah. So is he still in a full-time job or is he now just working for you? No. Yeah. He just works for me. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and your girls, are you still homeschooling or are they back in school? No, they're back in school. I think homeschooling is really cool, but that is not, that's not my thing. Um, and I always say, if you want, um, you know, homeschooling kindergarten during the pandemic was just like a phase that which is really hard. So they're in school. Um, they're in third grade. Um, and yeah, so we put them on the bus and then we try really hard to set our business hours like while they're at school and then, you know, have our evenings and weekends free. Yeah, I love that. So are the girls like, do they think that's really cool that you guys work together? I don't, you know, it's interesting. <laughs> we were talking the other day and they were like, mommy, what are you doing? Are you doing Kajabi and taxes? Cause it was like tax season. And like, so they're <laughs> like picking up like different terms um, and then I like, will ask them, I'm like, well, what do you think that I do? And they're like, well, you help women build businesses. And I was like, okay. So I think they're like, they're getting it. Um, I don't think they think it's any different, but it makes me really proud that like we have both parents at everything basically. Yes. Like we're both putting them on the bus. Like we're, we just volunteered at their field day. Like I got to go on their roller skating field trip. Um, so I don't think they appreciate it yet, but I hope they will when they're older and they look back and they know that like we, like we're there for every single thing. Yeah. Yeah. And they will, because my boys are 23 and 21 and they talk yeah. about that now, like oh, you, know, that's you so guys cool. are always there and yeah, they loved that. 
And of course, in the top at the moment, no. And, you know, when they're busy and doing their thing, it's just like, oh, okay, I don't care if you're there or not. But looking back, they really appreciate it. Yeah. So kudos to you guys that you're making that a priority and keeping your family so tight knit. I love that. Yeah. I think it's so important as, as kids grow to see their parents, you know, being able to have a relationship and do these things together and to support them equally. It's yeah. Great. You know, I, I think they see us work too, though. Um, and I think that's something that people maybe don't share as much. I mean, we have an office downstairs that we share together and like, you know, sometimes on Saturday morning, we might be doing taxes or something like that. We'll be like, Hey, we just need like an hour. And they're old enough now where, you know, we can manage that time. Um, but I think that just goes back to the flexibility of being able to, you know, pick and choose when you want to do certain things. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And it is important. I think, especially with girls that they see you working really hard and accomplishing things, Mm -hmm. but at the same time, helping other people accomplish Mm -hmm. something. And they'll see yeah. that, you know, you're helping to create this ripple effect of good. And then it, they'll strive for that as well. Yeah. One of the coolest things is, so we have a mastermind and we actually have the um, summer or fall retreat at our house. Um, so my clients have, you know, come in and my kids get to meet my clients, but I have a couple of clients who've been with me for a while and like, they've started to bring their kids into town for their retreat. So then we have this like sort of big, like family fest where we're all, um, hanging out. And I think that's been really cool for everyone's family to see of like, it doesn't have, you don't have to do it in a bubble. Right. Um, there's a different way. And really when you, when you step outside of that bubble and you seek help and you build community around what you're doing, you're going to go farther faster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So lastly, we're going to touch on one more thing and so when you talk about, you know, scaling, working eight to 10 hours a week, now you're in your business full time. But I believe that if you really do stay focused on your time and your energy and you stay organized and disciplined, you can have a successful entrepreneurial journey with still focusing on just that limited amount of time. Mm-hmm. You don't have to be 40 hours a week or 60 hours a week if you stay focused and you use a model similar to yours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, I will say, I feel like it was like an awkward teenager phase when I left my job, because I was like, I really had to like untrain my brain of ways that I had been doing things. Like, you know, if I don't have to get up at 5am, I can get up at 6am. It's totally okay. Like, I feel like I would, it took a minute for me to get adjusted to actually being in control of my schedule. Um, but I like to challenge myself. So my, you know, my first challenge was like, let's build a business in eight to 10 hours a week. And then I was like, okay, well, I don't want to have meetings on Mondays and Fridays. So I set that up. And then I was like, you know what, the last week of every month, I don't want to have any meetings. So the last week of every month this year is just white space. It's just, sometimes we go on vacation. Sometimes I'm working on special projects. Sometimes it's just like a catch up week. Um, and so I, like, I believe to my core that if you can control your schedule, like just magic will happen. Like it all comes down to like where you spend your time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And, and how you spend your time. So, Mm -hmm. you know, it's not, I mean that what you're doing in those blocks of time too. Yeah. Yeah, Um, Okay. So you and I both have a philosophy that you don't have to be on social media to grow your business. Mm -hmm. And I, I love to emphasize this because when I've talked about it and I have not knock on wood, had this happen yet where I, my account was hacked and I lost all my followers, but you did have that happen and you had it happen multiple times. And Mm -hmm. I think you're a great example of building that foundation so that if that happens, you don't lose your entire world, your entire business, your entire community. So I would love for you to touch on that and how, like how, what that experience meant to you and how you have navigated that and shifted gears so that you're not so focused on the social media component. Yeah. Well, the first thing I will share is, you know, when I started, I couldn't be focused on the social media component because I was in, you know, corporate meetings and I, I literally, it was impossible for me to post, you know, 17 times a day or do 27 stories. Like it just wasn't in the cards. So I knew going in that I had to figure out a way how to use social media to my advantage, but one that my business was not built on it. So the first thing that I like to say is social media is not a business strategy. It's like a tool in your toolkit. 
and we use it, but the way we use it is I would say like a magazine. So it's like the second act. It's like the second piece. So if you go look at my social media, 95% of it is repurposed from somewhere else. It's from a podcast interview, a blog, uh, and most of the time, like at the beginning, it was me repurposing it. And now we have a team that does it. So like, you know, you might see five to seven posts, but it's not, I'm not sitting in front of my phone doing it. Like it's scheduled or mm -hmm. it's repurposed from somewhere. So I like to think of it like that. Like it's a tool in the toolkit. Yeah. Um, and I would say that, you know, the biggest driver of that for me is to have a home base that's not social media. So for me mm -hmm. personally, it was a podcast. If you don't have a podcast, it could be a blog post or even just email. Um, that's like pushing people to something that you own because it can be taken away. Uh, so I created this before it was taken away, but then it's been taken away twice. So the first time it was in the summer, both times it's been in the middle of a launch. So I feel like it's like the universe just testing me. So, um, the first time it was during our mastermind retreat and my team was like, Holly, like we're not seeing anything what's happening. And if you ever have hosted a retreat, like it's kind of fun to share behind the scenes, like what's happening and long story short, it, it went away and came back. And then this last time, um, it was down for almost three months. So, you know, you get an email from Instagram and it's like, we're sorry, we took your account down because of X, Y, Z. Like I don't share content that's inappropriate. So, you know, you got to log a case and then you basically just have to wait, like it's out of your control. Um, I actually didn't think this time it was going to come back. So we started a new account and it just came back actually two weeks ago. <laughs> so the old account is just sitting there. I actually like the smaller account better. Um, but I think the whole lesson learned is like, it can go away in a minute and you've mm -hmm. got to have a plan B. Like in this case, you have to have a plan B. So our plan B was number one, if you don't have, you can set up zaps to take all the content that you create on social and put it in a spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's the first thing that we've done, which has been super helpful because now I can just reshare things that I shared years ago and it's just sitting in my Google drive. And then the second thing is, is, you know, we've got a system between the podcast and, you know, some of our lead magnets where I just use email. So email is, you know, sort of our backup system. But also, you know, we've implemented things like SEO. Um, so we're searchable. We've got Pinterest going on. Pinterest is actually not social. It's a search engine. It's yep. very controllable um, and you can schedule things. So anytime that I can create something where I can control what's happening, that's what I like to do more of. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Me too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And SEO is so incredibly powerful. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's where, um, you're guaranteed long-term opportunity when yeah. you have an SEO strategy. So I'm really big into that. So I love that we're on the same page and that we are using, and I really don't use it as, as often I'm more of a LinkedIn and, and Pinterest girl, but mm -hmm. it's, it is great to to have that foundation and have more of us letting people know that, that you don't have to be in this hustle mindset. You know, I love your title, your podcast cut crush the rush, because mm -hmm. we don't have to have that sense of rushing and hustle to find and achieve success. So I love everything you're doing. So thank you, Holly, yeah. for being here. Will you please tell the listeners a little bit about how they can connect with you and follow you purchase your planner and all those yeah. good things. Yeah. So I'll share two things. So if you want to design your own CEO week is what I call it and figure out like what your time blocks are, what theme days work for you and really how to sort of fit in the business activities, you can just go to hollymariehaines.com forward slash CEO week. Um, it's a five day challenge and I'm behind the scenes answering your questions. So you can ask me questions and I'll answer them. Um, and it's a super powerful tool. I have multiple clients that like take it multiple times. Cause when they get stuck, they're like, okay, I got to go back to CEO week. Uh, so that's part one. And then if you're curious how we set up our anti-social strategy, I love podcasting. I wasn't kidding about that. So I have my crush the rush podcast, but we also have a private podcast, which goes into how to set up your, what I call anti-social framework. It's just hollymariehaines.com forward slash social. Um, so you can get a lot of great, uh, information and nuggets from both of those. Awesome. Holly, thanks so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much. 
Listeners, if you enjoyed this episode, please go give Holly some love and also please leave a rating and review and share it with somebody that you know that is trying to build a solid foundation for their business and achieve the success that they're striving for, but are uh, approaching that burnout feeling or experiencing just too much hustle. Because I think this, this episode is a great way to really dive into what you can do in a short amount of time. So thanks for being here and I will see y'all next week.